GMRS Antennas Now. Hello, radio operators, both licensed amateurs and casual walkie-talkie owners. My name is Sandy, KB3EOF. Since we now have a functioning GMRS repeater in Frederick County, you may be wondering if your handheld GMRS radio can reliably hit the repeater from your location. Fear not. This video will show you how to construct a directional antenna for GMRS that I hope you will agree works great and is easy to construct. This is another great project from the Palomino Antenna Workshop that takes maybe a few hours to construct and tune. So, what are the advantages of this antenna? We'll start by using the free software modeling program MMANA GAL Basic to demonstrate the properties of this antenna. Let's go ahead and open the file. As you can see, the antenna is a bow tie design fed by coax at the center bar. This circulates the current around the two loops so that the two ends are always in phase. Goes around that way, goes around that way, and back. So these two ends are always in phase, whereas this part and this part and this part are always out of phase. So the, this provides the vertical polarization of the broadcast signal. If you put a test signal through this uh, at a frequency of 467.675 megahertz, you see a, a nice low SWR of 1.01. If you want to replicate this, just copy the numbers that you see here using the geometry tab. And when you um, go to calculate, put in the frequency here, make it real ground, height of 7 meters, and use copper pipe to uh, get the same results. The radiation pattern of this antenna is bidirectional. There's a 11.39 dBi gain to the front and rear, as you see here. And it has a nice low angle, so the signal stays where you want it, right along the ground. You can get a better idea of how the antenna radiates with a 3D plot. This shows the bidirectional flow and the null right up on the top. Okay, enough of the theory. Let's get into the construction. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We are now going to show you the parts necessary for the twin delta loop GMRS antenna. Here's just a little preview of measurements that we're going to use. And here are the parts. We're going to start with the pigtail. This is the attachment that um, feeds the antenna. And we've got um, SO239 crimp on ends to the RG58U. Don't know if that will show up, but uh, it's just a length of uh, antenna of uh, coax. Here's the crimper. And we're looking for the number two. 1.3 on there, 0.213. That's where we're going to crimp those ends on. Uh, we've got some paper clips, which we will show you what we're going to do with later. Hanger strap, a little uh, tin snip to cut the hanger strap, and some nuts and bolts of the proper size to fit on the 3D printed form, which we will include in this video as a um, project that you can get your favorite 3D printer person to print up for you. Okay, now we're going to make our first measurement and cut on the hanger strap. And we're going to take the, um, we want to do a close up here. We're going to take this B length, which is, there's four of them. One, two, three, four. You, you could stay on the right side up so that they can actually read it. There we go. The B side. One, two, three, four. So we're going to get four of these. 
and it has to be 23.2 centimeters long. So as was pointed out to me, we can actually just put the end of that on there, pull it out, and let's go to uh, 24, to, just to give it a little extra wiggle room for tuning purposes. I've already cut one of these. It's uh, just over 24 centimeters long. We want to have four of them. So one thing that's probably useful is to have a hole that lines up on the end so that um, when you uh, attach it to this uh, form, you got a hole that uh, you can easily bolt on there. So I'm going to line up this hole here and snip the end so that um, they match, more or less. And then snip the other end so that they're equal length. Until we have four of these puppies. Okay, we cut a uh, length of the A section, which is the top. This will actually be the, if you, if you have it on its side, this will be the broadcasting section. The two broadcasting sections are the bow tie. And it's a little bit shorter, it's 22.4. I went ahead and cut it a little bit longer because we're going to be sliding this thing up and down, tuning it with the aid of those uh, paper clips. So this is actually a little closer to 23 and something. And we just cut another one of the same length. You don't have to line up the holes on this one because uh, we're not going to actually be attaching anything with the holes on here. So just go ahead and clip it to length. There we go. And we got all of our sections now made. All right, now we're going to put the arms on the 3D printed form. So I've already uh, done that, just screwed on there. And we need to fasten the uh, arms to the form. And so the best way is to just put a hole through one of these and then put a couple of your screws through that. There's a couple ways you can do that. If you've got one of these fancy uh, hole punchers, all right, this thing is uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Just go ahead and put that through one of the distal holes. There we go. You can see a little close to the edge, but it did punch through. And then you put that on there. If you don't happen to have one of these fancy hole punches, you can just use plain old 3 16 drill and drill a hole and put it through. We are going to put a crimp connector, the blue one, let's see, number two, onto the uh, center connector here. And um, we put the uh, cable through the center hole. And this nice little crimper will click it on there. Before crimping, let's go over how to prepare the coax feed point. I like to use a coax stripper a flush angle wire cutter, and a toothpick. The little black arrow on this coax stripper is set to 9 for RG58. And with the coax lightly placed inside, I do one revolution around. Then with the angle cutter, remove the coax cover carefully, trying not to 
damage any of the braid inside. Then push down the braid, spreading it out, and using a toothpick, undo the braid on one side, then twist the braid for the ground connection. Alright, to uh, crimp on the ring terminal, I like to use the long pink ones, if you can find them. Just uh, slide that in there and crimp it on. Use your crimp tool. And also, you need to crimp one on the center. So let's go ahead and strip off some copper wire from this center conductor. using this little nice device. And we do the same thing with this. Actually, it needs to be twisted. Put that on there. And crimp that on. When you prepare this center, when you feed that crimped in, well, actually, you're feeding the coax through the center hole here. Feed that coax through the hole. You can epox or put hot glue to hold it in place. And then take the um, ring terminals and attach it to the two nuts. I like to bend them so that uh, you get some um, additional space in there. I also like to trim this um, copper plated uh, hanger strap so that they do maintain a good healthy distance and then put a glop of uh, hot glue there to hold everything in place and weatherproof it. Now comes the fun part of tuning the antenna. Clamp the two ends of the bow tie in place using paper clips or hemostats and slide them in and out until you find a nice low SWR at your target frequency. In this case, around 466 to 467 megahertz. Here we used a nano VNA, but you could also use a simple SWR meter attached to a GMRS radio. It's best to tune it in the location where it is installed to be sure you end up with the desired result when it is mounted up on a pole. Once the optimal positions are found, solder the copper straps together. Use soldering rosin paste flux and a chisel shaped soldering iron. Run it along the edge where the copper overlaps and solder in place. This has been another production of the Palomino Antenna Workshop, produced and directed by KC3MAU, filmed by K3KOH, and narrated by KB3EOF. 73, and happy GMRSing!